Greetings viewers and welcome to the next video in Hater Star Guide series. In this video I'm going to be talking about technology, modules and research in Hater Star. So research in Hater Star can mean two things, researching artifacts and researching modules. The way the mechanic works is you do the Red Star missions, you get artifacts out of them. The artifacts are placed on the research station where they are researched one at a time and researching artifacts gives you rewards, amongst which are blueprints for modules. Blueprints allow you to research modules and upgrade modules to the next level. So, for example, I require 12,000 blueprints of Cargo Bay extension to upgrade it from level 7 to level 8, or, for example, 10 levels of Entrust blueprint to upgrade it from level 1 to level 2. Blueprints come from artifacts, artifacts come from red stars. Red stars have several levels of difficulty. The higher the difficulty level, the higher the level of artifacts you can take from the red star. So for example, a level 4 red star will have up to level 4 planets. And from level 4 planets you can get level 4 artifacts. Like here you have a 4 planet, a 4 planet, a 2 planet, a 4 planet. So it's mostly going to be the max level planets, but also like a 3 level planet, a 2 level planet, but mostly the max level. So in order to get level 4 artifacts, you have to deliver 4 red stars. And for example, if we take a level 6 red star or level 7 red star, level 7 will mostly have level 7 planets, like this planet here. And also it will have level 6, but mostly it's going to be level 7, level 7, level 7. So, you do the red star, you get the artifacts from the red star and you bring them to your research station. Here you can do two things with them. You can either salvage or research. Salvage just destroys the artifact and gives you credits and hydrogen back. This is going to be used when you're going to be farming red stars for credits. And this is not about research, it's about getting credits to spend on stuff. And then you can research. Research basically works like this. Your research station, you can only have one of the stations and you cannot upgrade it. It's always level one. Research station will research artifacts one after the other in this sequence. You can place up to four and it takes up to three hours. So when you reach red star level four, that's when you come to the maximum time to research one artifact, three hours. And since red star level four, all of your artifacts will be researched in three hours each. And so it takes 12 hours to research all those artifacts. So once in 12 hours, you have to come, come online and put new artifacts in the queue. And that's why we place this in a triangular shape here. You're gonna be wanting to stockpile artifacts to be researched. So you don't have to always like play the game. You can, if you cannot play the game for several days, you can still like move these artifacts. It takes several seconds to move them. Just log in move new artifacts in the queue, log out, and you won't be like wasting your research queue. So when you research an artifact, you get more credits, more hydrogen, and you also get blueprints for your modules. So for example, here I'm getting 200 and 2,400. If I research, I get like 450 and 2,000 respectively. So it's way better idea to research an artifact and to salvage it, obviously but you are limited in how many artifacts you can research and it's like not really useful to speed up this research timer it's not very it's not an effective way to spend your crystals so you're only going to be researching artifacts at a certain speed and so you're going to be salvaging your excess artifacts so artifacts come in three varieties uh, there are orbs crystals and tetrahedrons so orbs here, crystals like this, and tetrahedrons. And you can actually see like the amount of objects here is like equal to the level of the artifact. But since tetrahedrons only spawn at level two of the red star and above, at first tetrahedrons had like one level lower than other kinds of artifacts. So level 5 tetrahedron, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It was equal to level 6 orb. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 orbs here. And this was confusing 
and so the developers changed it that a tetrahedron level 6 is the same like level as a normal level 6 but they didn't change the image so all tetrahedrons got one level up but the images stayed the same so the tetrahedrons will have one less object in the picture than the respective orb and the crystal so what's the difference between those like artifacts up until like for the majority of the game until you reach like level 9 or 10 red stars uh, it will be the same reward for each so you're gonna get same crystal uh, same hydrogen same uh, credits for salvage or for research but you're going to be getting different blueprints blueprints like they come from artifacts and there are trade, mining, weapons, shields, and support modules in the game. So there are blueprints for each kind of technology. And blue crystals will provide trade and mining blueprints. Orbs will provide weapons and shields blueprints. And tetrahedrons will provide support blueprints. So the kind of blueprint you research determines what kind of blue... Sorry. So the kind of artifact research determines what kind of technology you will receive from the artifact. So if you research blue crystals, you will get trade and mining technology. If you research orbs, you will get weapons and shields technology. If you research tetrahedrons, you will get support technology. At first, you're not going to be really choosing. You're going to be researching like everything you got. But eventually, quite basically quite quickly, you're gonna have specific plans and like specific research plan you want to follow and so you're gonna be researching specific kinds of artifacts that you need for your research goals. So for example, if I want to upgrade certain module, I'm gonna, for example, if I want to upgrade my trade cargo bay, I want to be researching only the crystals, I want to stockpile and eventually salvage orbs and tetrahedrons and so this is how it's gonna go. At first you research anything you got, and once you get a surplus of artifacts, you're gonna be choosing to research some of them and salvage the others. So as I said, uh, higher level red stars provide higher level artifacts, and higher level artifacts provide higher amount of blueprints and higher levels of blueprints. So here is a table of blueprints per artifact and in the rows we have artifact levels and in the columns we have module levels. So for example, if you take Red Star level 4, uh, if you take Red Star level 4 artifact, artifact of level 4, like a level 4 orb, you will receive up to two blueprints of level 4 module, a module which only appears at level 4 and above from 4 to 6 blueprints of a level 3 module, from 8 to 20 blueprints of a level 2 module, and from 25 to 60 more, uh, blueprints of a level 1 module. So for example, if we look at, for example, a blue crystal, we're gonna get, if we research a level 4 blue crystal, we're gonna get from 25 to 60 blueprints of one of the modules, which can be either cargo bay extension or mining boost, we're gonna get from 8 to 20 blueprints of a module which can be either shipment computer, hydrogen by extension or enrich. We're gonna get four to six more blueprints of a module which can either be trade boost, trust or remote mining. And we're gonna get up to like two blueprints of a module which is gonna be either trade burst, hydrogen upload or mining unity. So you can see this is how it always goes. It goes from like two blueprints to maximum six, maximum 20, maximum 60, and maximum 120. And from there on, it's like the same amount. So what this means is you're gonna get way more blueprints when you go up in the red star for previous level modules. And what this also means is like, for example, if you are at red star level four and you want like a certain kind of blueprint in big quality quantities you don't actually want to like try to obtain it right now because it's going to take you way too much time like it's going to take you way too much time when you're in red star level four 
to try to go, for example, for a hydrogen upload upgrades because you're going to get like two blueprints at once per each research. And like if you wait till Redstone level six, you're going to be getting like 10 times more blueprints. Obviously, you're going to be progressing way faster. Same thing, for example, if you want to upgrade your battery to the next level and the battery is a level one weapons module, you will want to do that when you have at least Redstar level 5 artifacts available like because otherwise you're not going to be getting the full benefit of it you're going to be getting half the like you're going to be getting half the amount of blueprints you would otherwise get so this means that basically you want to rush Redstar level 5 as quick as possible and you want to at Redstar level 5 you want to focus on like hoarding blueprints for level one modules. So it doesn't matter if you research a level five or level seven artifact, you're still gonna get this amount, the same amount of level one module. So what this means, at higher levels of the game, when you get to like Red Star level four, Red Star level five, when you start choosing which artifacts you want to research, you're gonna be wanting to pay attention to this table and choose the artifacts which give you the most modules like they, which get you to your like goals faster. For example, if you're at Redstar level five and you're gonna soon be at Redstar level six, let's say you want to both research your battery and you want to research, for example, your teleport and your like enrich modules or your shipping computer. So should you be going for battery now or should you be going for teleport and shipping computer? Well, the answer is battery because at Redstar level five, you're getting full amount of blueprints of your battery, but you're only getting half of the blueprints you could, you could be getting for your enrich or for your, for your enrich or for your, for example, teleport. So if you want to go for all these modules, battery, shipping, computer, and teleport, first should aim to get your battery up because you will be researching crystals and you'll be getting a full amount of blueprints for your battery. And by the time you research your battery, hopefully you can already go to level six red stars and start getting level six artifacts where you're going to be getting a full amount of blueprints for level two modules. And then you can go for shipment computer and enrich and get them faster, get more blueprints, like twice the blueprints of that kind of module. So pay attention to this table uh, and if you absolutely need a certain module at a higher level, like for example, it's very beneficial to upgrade a ship and drone. So even though I'm at level six now, I'm still going for it. And I'm like going very slowly because I get like five blueprints on average per research, but still I want to get it up. So I'm going for it. But otherwise consider going for lower level modules first so you can get more blueprints per artifact and you can progress faster. Okay, so next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, how, like, what, how, how modules are distributed between the levels. So this is the table of modules per level. So at level one, you get unlock of these modules. At level four, these modules become available and so on and so forth. So, as you can see, we, each artifact will give you a blueprint of each level. So when you research level one artifact, you only get blueprints for level one. And if you research a level three artifact, you get blueprints for one level three, one level two, and one level one module, and so on and so forth. And this is how the modules are, once again, distributed between levels. And what this means is, for example, when you research an orb, you're gonna get a random level one blueprint if it's a level one plus orb, a random level two blueprint if it's a level two plus orb and so on and so forth. So for example, taking um, crystals, you're gonna get a choice of two modules at level one or three modules at level two. So it's actually harder to get shipment computer blueprints because you get a choice of one of the three modules randomly when you research a crystal. So for example, you if you research crystals and orbs evenly, 
you're gonna end up with more blueprints in laser and delta shield than in shipment computer hydrogen bay and enrich respectively because they're going to be split between these three and here they're going to be split between these two so just pay attention to it some modules it's going to be harder to get blueprints for because there's more choice like there's only one choice at level seven here but two choices at level seven here so it's going to be harder to get blueprints for vengeance or delta rocket because you're going to have a choice between one or the other but easier to get blueprints for recall because all the blue crystals you're going to research they are all going to give you recall blueprints so how do blueprints translate into module levels let's take for example a shipment drone module you can see that at first you're only going to need one module uh, blueprint and then 20 then 50 100 200 500 and this uh, amount is not uh, like spent when you research so when you have 150 blueprints and you research level 4 shipment drone you will still have these 150 blueprints you will now need 50 more to get to 200 blueprints to upgrade it once more so they're not spent they're just accumulated up to this amount when you can research it to the max level so as you can see it goes up pretty quickly so for example when you like shipment drone is level 5 module and when you reach level 5 red star you're gonna get it eventually and you're gonna be able to research it to level 1 but to get to level 2 shipment drone you're gonna have to stockpile 20 blueprints which on average means you're gonna have to research uh, red star level 5 blue crystal 10 times 10 times you have to get the drone exactly but you have a choice between four modules so you're gonna have to research it 40 times on average to get 20 blueprints for the shipment drone and since you can research one artifact every three hours four artifacts per 12 hours eight artifacts per day uh, to get 40 like researches you have to spend like five days to get it when you're at star level five it's going to take you if you aim to get level two shipment drone it's going to take you like five days but if you get to level six red star now you're getting like five on average it's twice like two, two and a half times faster so it's going to take you only two days and if you wait till level seven red star you're going to be getting like what you're going to be getting like um, an average of about what is it here 14 artifacts so it's going to be three times even faster so you're going to get it like in one day of research so this shows how this game basically balances itself basically the game kind of gates the levels of modules you're going to get at certain red star levels and as you get up in the red star level you can get to the next level of the module so it's not going to be realistic to get past level 3 shipment drone on level 5 red star but once you get to level like six red star you're quickly gonna get level three and then you're slowly gonna progress to level four and after that very slowly to level five if you even ever get there but once you get to the red star level seven you're gonna quickly get to level four slowly to level five and so on and so forth the progress continues now let's talk how the module upgrades improve the modules so basically there are three kinds of modules and there are modules which improve just gradually like a small increase in effect of the module and in price there are modules which basically get worse as you upgrade them so they get less effective and less useful so you want to like pay attention there and there are modules which improve like very effectively so once you upgrade the module it gets way better and way better again and way better again and we are gonna show this on the example modules here i'm gonna explain how this works so first of all let's take a shipment like trade boost module as an example and as you can see with trade boost you get a fixed shipment reward bonus while the module is active and as you upgrade the module you just get a flat increase in the amount of the reward so you get 6% at first, 8%, 10%, 12%. So basically you're just getting a flat 2% every time. You upgrade this module and it goes like 
8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So it's just a flat 2%. So all it gets is it gives you a better reward and you have to spend some money to get it there and then you get to benefit from this reward. So this module is an example of a module which gets upgraded linearly. So as you upgrade it, it just gets better and better, like at a similar pace. So that's nothing interesting here. So with this kind of module, upgrading this module will always be a good idea if you don't have anything else to upgrade. But like you won't lose anything if you upgrade it, but you won't actually gain much either. You're just gonna upgrade these kinds of modules when you have like spare like spare money to upgrade and you don't have anything better to upgrade, you're gonna upgrade one of these kind of modules. Now let's take for example a module which improves drastically when you upgrade it. Shipment drone. So shipment drone, when it upgrades, it increases the amount of cargo slots and its bonus at the same time. So the way shipment drone works is it randomly delivers shipments for you and it picks several shipments to one destination and goes there and delivers them. And when it does, it tries to pick as many shipments as it can. So if it, for example, has, if you have a level four shipment drone, you can pick up up to six shipments. If you have a level one shipment drone, up to four shipments. And for example, level one drone, if it picks all the four shipments, it's gonna give you 3% for every shipment after the first. So it's gonna give you three multiplied by four minus one, which is three, 9% reward, for all the shipments which it delivered in this batch. So if I have one shipment which costs 100 credits to deliver, I'm going to receive 100. If I deliver two such shipments, I'm going to get a 3% bonus. So it's going to be not 200, but 206. And if I deliver three shipments, it's going to be instead of 300, it's going to be 318 and so on and so forth. So the more shipments of the same you deliver at the same time, the greater the reward. But when you get up in level, not only your bonus increases, but your total amount of slots also goes up. To demonstrate how the reward increases, let's pick this calculator here. So let's see, at first your maximum reward is nine, but once you upgrade, you don't get 2% reward. You actually get since you get four slots, you can get reward from now, you can get this amount now. So you get 6% extra reward. But then, once you upgrade it from five to six slots, now at five slots, you can get up to 28% because you can get 7% of four slots. But on six slots, you can now get this much. So you jump from 28 to 40% 40 maximum reward. And so as you can see, this module actually goes way, way, way better when you upgrade it. You get from 9% to 15% to, um, to 15% to 28%, then to 40% and so on and so forth. And once you upgrade from this to this, once again, you had uh, 45 maximum amount, you get to 60. So you get from 45 to 60 when you jump from six slots to seven slots. And so this kind of module is very beneficial to upgrade because you get a very huge boost when you upgrade it. And so this is the module you're gonna seek to upgrade whenever you can. But for example, if we take EMP module, as you can see here, you get a 30 second stun and it costs 40, but then you get a 33 second stun only three seconds more, but it costs twice the amount of hydrogen to use this stun. So even, he, even this upgrade is not really like an upgrade you want to do immediately. You might want to think about, maybe I want to delay this upgrade because you only get three seconds effect for twice the amount of hydrogen. In practice, since uh, EMP stuns all the ships around your ship and your ship as well, you're gonna be following with another ship so one ship stuns and then the second ship goes and fires at the enemies which are stunned. So you're gonna have a delay about 12 seconds between your ships. Like after you stun, only when 12 seconds or so passes, 
your second shift will start benefiting from this stun. So you can think about this effect duration as 18 and this as 21. So it's like 15%, 20% more stun duration, not 10%, but still you pay twice as much for like only 15, 20% more stun. And here you again pay twice as much for only a little bit more stun, like another 15, 20%. And then you're gonna have to pay like again, almost twice as much for just two seconds. Again, almost twice as much for just two seconds. So as you can see, like this kind of module, it has certain points where you want to stop upgrading the module and keep it at this level. And you only want to go up in a level when you are sure that you need this. Like for example, EMP is good at level three. It's a reasonable compromise. Yes, it costs more, but you can usually afford this amount of hydrogen. It's not gonna be a big deal for you eventually, but you don't want to go f further than that unless you start to compete in white stars, then you need as long EMP as you can ma manage. And then you're gonna start to upgrade your EMP to get a higher level, higher duration EMP. But before you go there, you wanna keep this module at low levels. So to reiterate, three kinds of modules there are. Some modules you want to upgrade whenever you can, because these modules give you a huge improvement every time or almost every time you get them up. Flat modules which just go up a flat value and these you upgrade when you don't have any kind of these modules to upgrade. And modules which actually decrease in effectiveness. And these kinds of modules you want to stay on certain level and only go up in level when you know what you're doing and when you're absolutely sure you will need this higher level of the module because otherwise you're gonna just make yourself less effective, which is not good. So next let's talk about how the research process itself works. As I've shown in this table, uh, the modules, they take like increasing amount of research price and research time to research. And obviously like at my level, I'm already paying like millions to increase like the module level and it takes like five days. And at first, you're gonna be quick to research modules. It's gonna take you like one day or maybe four, eight hours. Then it's gonna go up. So you're gonna get slower and slower, but still you're gonna get like a new module every now and then, every several days. And the way like a module upgrade goes is you first research artifacts to get one blueprint. Then you can unlock it. You unlock the module. Then you can use the module and then you upgrade it and you make the module better. Several modules in the game are not actually good to be unlocked at all. You don't want to unlock several modules because you will only get screwed by that. So the way the game objectives work is objectives often make you use a certain module. For example, I have a module objective to use hydrogen upload right here. And if you don't have the module unlocked, you will never get an objective for the module. And this means you don't actually want to unlock certain modules ever, so you don't have to use them. Like for example, uh, for a long time, you will have a battleship which doesn't use support modules at all. Then you're gonna have one support slot and you're gonna be using EMP in that slot because that's the best module there is for a level one battleship. I mean level two battleship, which can equip level one support module. So you don't want to unlock any module um, that you're not going to be using. That means you don't want to unlock any module except EMP, Teleport, Red Star Extender, or Time Warp, maybe. Because you're not going to be using any other module on your ship. Like, you're going to be using EMP on your battleship, and Teleport, or Time Warp, or Red Star Extender on your transports and miners. But if you unlock, for example, Repair Module, or Sanctuary Module, uh, salvage module early, you're not going to be using this module, but you're going to be getting objectives to use it. And so you're going to have to actually put this module on your ship just to do the objective and get the reward. Because sure, you can wait and skip the objective, but this is going to mean you're losing a reward from this objective. But if you actually want to not lose this reward, you have to put the module on so you have to pay for it, use it, and then remove it. 
so I have to pay again to install the module back. For example, right now, if I get an objective to use the repair module, this objective gives me like 50,000 credits. So I have to spend 2,500 2, to put this module on. Like I have to replace my EMP here with a repair module, which costs 250. And then I have to put the EMP back again, which costs like another thousand. So I don't get a full reward. I only get a part of it because I paid to install and to remove a module. If I would have never unlocked the repair module, I would have never had this problem. I would just have objectives which use the modules I actually use and never reference a module I don't use. So that's the first point. Don't unlock modules you're not using. Only unlock the modules you actually need and actually gonna use like right after you unlock them. Important modules to watch out for are remote repair, salvage, hydrogen upload, and Genesis. Because for example, Genesis says, okay, make five asteroids using Genesis. You can only make two asteroids per day. So if you don't equip Genesis on like at least three miners, there's no way you're going to do this objective in time. So you're going to have to wait several days to do it, which is again a waste of reward. So either unlock Genesis when you will need it or don't unlock it at all. Same thing with, for example, upload. It's a good module, but if you look at a level like uh, a miner level four will be able to put three slots on it. A miner level three and level two, only two slots. So you're gonna have a minor level two and level three for quite a long time through the game. And so you're gonna have two slots. One slot you will be using for remote mining, second slot for mining boost. So for a long time in the game, you won't have a third mining slot to actually put a module in. So if you unlock hydrogen upload, there's no slot to put it on. You have to sacrifice your mining speed, which is bad, or your mining, like every asteroid, convenience and speed at the same time, which is also bad. So if you get this objective before you have level four miners like I do, it will be a very bad situation for you because you won't have your slot to put your hydrogen upload on. So don't unlock hydrogen upload. Don't unlock alpha missile before you're gonna start using alpha missile on your support ships. And basically only unlock the stuff you need because you don't want to be wasting your resources and time on something you're not gonna need for the nearby time, nearby future. Also, once again, uh, watch what you upgrade. Don't upgrade a module unless it's just a pure benefit. Like teleport is an example of a module which is just a pure benefit to upgrade. Like the range goes up immensely. The cost goes up just a little bit and basically it gets more effective as you go up. So it's a good idea to upgrade it. But most of the modules like weapons also always good to upgrade. But most of the modules you have to watch out. Like sure I could upgrade my shipment computer now, but it's only 2% increase for a huge amount of money. Again, if I upgrade my drone now, I'm gonna get a way better increase in my drone efficiency. So I'm not gonna upgrade my shipment computer before I upgrade my drone and so on and so forth. So basically that's it, how the research works in the game. You get the artifacts, you put them to research in the station, you get blueprints, you use blueprints to upgrade your modules. You're gonna plan ahead eventually when you get like all the basic modules you want. You're gonna plan ahead and you're gonna plan to get a certain amount of blueprints for some module. Like I was researching mostly tetrahedrons because I wanted to get 4,000 blueprints for my teleport here. So I can get next level teleport because it's uh, like 33% increase in range. Once I got here, now I am I'm gonna be researching something else, like probably orbs to get my shields up next because I've already got enough blueprints here. 
And since next level of teleport is going to be like 8,000 blueprints, that's not going to happen in the nearest future. So there's no point to get more tetrahedrons for me now. I want to get different kinds of blueprints, different kinds of artifacts researched to get blueprints in the next area. Like maybe I'll go for the next cargo bay. So I'm going to get crystals next. So we're going to be planning to get certain modules and certain level of these modules. And so we're going to be mostly researching certain kinds of artifacts, not just randomly. And so that's basically it about research. Uh, finally, I want to talk about what you're going to be researching first and foremost in the game and certain important modules I want to touch like how they're used and when you want to research them. So let's talk about transports. Transports are gonna have uh, one slot when you start. Quickly you'll get to two and three slots on your transport. So when you have one slot on your transports, you're gonna be using uh, the cargo bay extension. Two slots you're gonna be using cargo bay extension and chip and computer. And three slots you're gonna be using cargo bay extension, chip and computer and your trade burst. Once you get a fourth slot like I have, like I have four slots on my transport now, you're going to be using uh, extension, trade burst, trade boost and ship and computer. So what this means is you're not going to be having five slots on your transports for quite some time. And so module like rush is completely useless. Yes, it increases your speed, but it doesn't really benefit you that much. It just makes you deliver shipments faster. But it's not really a big increase. And you want, since you're limited by amount of shipments you can deliver per day, because shipments only appear every hour, that means Rush won't give you more money. It will only give you more convenience in your gameplay. Like you can do shipments in a quicker, like smaller amount of time it's good for you but you don't get more money per day so rush is not going to be useful until you get to the end game where you have like five level transports and you can use like five levels five slots and so you can put all your boosting modules your burst your boost and then your rush same vein once you get to a level three transport you can use your third slot for one of the boosters. And you can either use this, which gives you 24% reward, or this, which gives you like 8% reward. Which one are you gonna choose? Obviously, you're gonna choose your trade burst. So it's not really beneficial to unlock trade boost before you get to use like three slots on your transport. And if by that time you can already unlock trade burst, there's no point unlocking trade boost ever until you get to a level 4 transport and can install your trade boost. Same thing with things like, as I said, hydrogen upload, very good module, but only if you can place it, if you have three slots on your miners, which is gonna come at level 4 miners. So before level 4 miners, don't worry about hydrogen upload. Same thing with a sanctuary module, it's gonna protect your ship from death but you only need this module either if you want to go to red stars and you want to protect your miners or transports or if you have battleship at least level 3 which has two slots for support modules as I said the best first support module is EMP because it gives you way more power in combat than any other module so only from level 3 battleship when you have two slots you're going to use sanctuary and so Sanctuary is very good because it allows you to basically leave your battleships somewhere in the end of the Red Star. So if you look here, let's see if this player doesn't die. <laughs> basically this player, he doesn't have to move his battleships back to his jump gate. He can just leave them somewhere and just leave them there and just make them basically stay there until the red star is over and when the red star is over uh, this player can just get these battleships back to his home like his battleships will return to his home system free of charge so at this point in the game battleship with this amount of spots 
costs a lot of money to a lot of hydrogen to move so him not having to move it back and not having to warp it back is saving him a lot of hydrogen which is like very big amount if you think of, if you compare it to the like amount it spends to move a ship or sanctuary like two per 100 uh, arbitrary units so sanctuary is going to be very useful when you get battleship level three but not before that so you don't want to unlock it because it costs a lot to unlock it's going to set you back quite a lot of credits again don't unlock your modules which will give you objectives which will screw you up only get these modules when you actually need them and finally which modules should you get first well the tutorial gives you blueprints for your cargo bay extension and it makes you research it and the tutorial gives you blueprints for your battery so first you want to get your battery and you want to install it on all your battleships because battery is a very big improvement over your weak battery which is a default weapon for your battleships after you get your battery uh, you want to improve your shipment computer this module will completely change the way your the way you use your transports because now you will see where the cargo goes so if i click right now here i'm going to see where the cargo goes from this planet and i can plan my route ahead that's because i have this uh, module here the shipment computer so unlocking shipment computer will change like the way to play the game in a significant way and also it's going to change the way you deliver shipments significantly because now you can just like make a route like this and you will automatically deliver shipments along this route you don't have to manually open the list of shipments pick up shipment deliver open it and then deliver again don't have to do that anymore after you get your shipment computer that's uh, when you want to consider are you going to be getting a quick red star level 3 upgrade or are you going to be farming level 2 of the red star so if you have someone to boost you like if you have uh, someone like from your corporation who can gift you a level 3 and higher orb you can get passive shield from it and passive shield is way better than active like alpha shield so you want to be getting passive shield and never unlocking alpha shield or again if you can quickly go to level 3 red stars you can skip alpha shield and just get passive shield and just use passive shield immediately but if you're a regular player you will most likely want to get alpha shield level 1 next thing cargo by extension and your transport so you can get uh, four slots on your transport and you can use your you can use your shipment computer at the transport and after that it's passive shield when you get to red star level three and after that it's maybe emp if you want if you want to start using emp you may get emp and get battleship level two to use your emp and then it's dual lasers it's a very cool weapon it's a very it's a great weapon it completely changes the way you engage enemies and you want to get it as soon as you get to red star level four it's level four right uh, yes dual laser is red star level four you want to immediately get dual laser once you get there also you want to get your mining boost and your area mining remote mining as soon as you can basically afford it so as soon as you can insert it into your research queue get it because it's going to give you way more hydrogen from red stars specifically which is going to be important to let you progress with the game faster so that's it uh, for technology video if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, I will answer. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe for more Hades Star content, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!